This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to easily build a website, portfolio, and online store, an all-in-one platform to give you the best design to showcase your work. Here are 10 ways to get faster in After Effects. Number one, hardware. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. If you've got better hardware, After Effects will run faster and you can work faster. A good CPU will make the most difference. Having multiple cores won't help you too much. A top of the line GPU won't really push the needle compared to its cost either. So you don't need to go crazy. More RAM will allow you to save more RAM previews, but it won't necessarily help you render faster. And having all your files on an SSD will help a bunch too. Number two is plugins. I'm a plugin minimalist, but there are some no brainers that will speed up anyone's workflow. FX Console and Ease Copy are free and are musts for me. FX Console allows you to search for effects with a keyboard shortcut, and you can also favorite your most used effects. It's also got a great tool for saving out images and copying your composition to the clipboard so you can paste it in other software. And I use this feature all the time. And Ease Copy allows you to copy the easing influence of multiple keyframes and paste them onto other keyframes. K-Bar, which allows you to save some of your frequent tasks to a custom toolbar. And Labels, which is this toolbar down on the left here, which allows you to change the color of any layer with just one click. And Overlord is really fantastic for quickly copying and pasting vector elements from Illustrator into After Effects. Number three is to remove the start screen. That is this thing that pops up every time you open After Effects and almost nobody uses it. So to get rid of that, we go over to edit, preferences, go to general and uncheck enable home screen. Now you can get to work straight away. Number four is to pre-render. If you've animated one element that is unlikely to change and you still want it to be visible in your playback, you can render it out. In this project, I've got this wavy ocean background and it's in every scene. And we even made this at 4K so we can zoom in on the really close scenes as well. And this uses a lot of wave warps, which can be really render intensive. So that one comp is using up a ton of resources. So what I did was get this comp, render it out, and then re-import it back in as a video file. Then I put it inside this comp, put it over the top, hit the other layers, so that instead of rendering all of these layers and all those effects every single frame, After Effects is just reading this one video file. And when it comes to rendering the final, you can even switch this layer back off and render out the whole thing again if you want it to be maximum quality. And this just means that our RAM previews are much faster and we can concentrate and be more reactive animating the other characters instead of just loading this background, which isn't really important. Number five is to organize your project. Having an organized project in your project panel will save you so much time navigating around and adding assets. It doesn't really matter what system you use as long as you have a system and you understand it. Different projects have different needs. I have an assets folder and a comps folder, which I sort of stick to, and each of which has subfolders in with more specific elements in there and some more specific folders in those as well. This is my blank template that loads as soon as I open a new project and you can download this for free in the description. To get After Effects to open up a project by default, you simply go to edit, preferences, new project, and then tick this box that says new project loads template, click choose your project template, find your file, and that's it. Now this is the bare bones skeleton folder structure that I use and I add a lot to this throughout the project depending on what it needs but most of my projects will need these basic folders. Justin McClure and GYST are a great resource for this. They have a template project as well that is great for larger projects where lots of people are involved and they've got a lot of writing about proper folder structure and naming conventions and even breakdowns of how other people organize their projects. Number six is use the mini flowchart. If you're not using the mini flowchart to navigate you could really save a lot of time by using it. Pressing tab on your keyboard is the shortcut to launching it and it is this little mini flowchart right here. This middle one, background 01, is our main comp that we have currently open. To the left are all the comps that this comp appears in and to the right are all the comps inside this comp and we only have to click on one of these to open up that comp. And now we can do that again and now we can see there are a whole bunch more comps inside this you know main comp here and this blue line indicates which comp we just came from so it's easy to navigate and you know know where we are so that's easy to see if we need to go back to that comp and we can also click on these arrows to jump further down the line and go deeper into our nested pre-comps a quick word about this video sponsor squarespace i've been using squarespace for more than three years now it's the easiest and most intuitive platform that i've ever used there are tons of templates for whatever you're using your website for. I love their ones for portfolio sites. They look clean and professional. You can go really minimal or a bit fancier, but whatever you choose, they let your work do the talking. That's what I really appreciate in portfolio design and that's what clients are there to see, your work. Head to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ben Marriott to save 10% off your first website or domain. 
Number seven is set up your workspaces. There are a bunch of default workspaces that you'll find up here and through this drop down menu down here. And you'll find these in most, if not all, Adobe programs. And these are things to help you show only the essential panel for what you're working on. The default ones include motion tracking, but they've got the tracker and the content aware fill and things you might need for that. Then you've got some just for color, if you're doing some color correction, but you can save your own custom ones. So I have one called Marriott One Screen, which is my one screen setup, which I use most of the time, which are the plugins I use most often. And then I have Marriott Record One, which is what I use for recording tutorials that kind of matches the default layout a bit more and doesn't show so many plugins. And to save your own workspace, you can add whatever windows you want, move them around to your desired area, go over here and select save as new workspace and name it something fun. And now we have that workspace that we can adjust and find right up here. And now we can easily switch back to that workspace with one click and that'll save us a lot of time opening up new windows and moving them around. Number eight is to set up render templates. If there are any render settings you use often and more than two times I think is often enough, you should make those settings a template. To do that, you customize what settings you like, click this arrow down here, select make template. You can adjust the settings in here as well and select OK, then every time you add something new to the render queue, that new template is listed here. I have custom ones for a PNG sequence, a ProRes 42, and an HD64 at 70% quality. And those three formats are what I use 99% of the time when rendering. Number nine is keyboard shortcuts. This may be the most obvious one, but learning the keyboard shortcuts for the commands you use most often will probably save you the most time. If you go up to edit and select keyboard shortcuts, there's a nice handy diagram here where you can see the shortcut commands on the keyboard. You don't have to know all of these, but if you find that you're splitting up layers very often, learning the keyboard shortcut for that, which is command plus shift plus D, will really help improve your workflow and save you a lot of time in the future. Even if you learn one new one a week, that's gonna add up to a lot of time pretty quickly. And there's even a search bar on the shortcuts menu where you can search for different commands, see if they have a shortcut, and if they don't, you can even add your own. Number 10 is autosave. You can customize how often After Effects autosaves from the preference menu and then selecting autosave. The default autosave is set to 20 minutes, which is a long time to lose. So I kind of set mine between five and 10, depending on how heavy the project is. This has saved me so much time of lost files over the years. And you can also increase the maximum project versions as well. The default is five, but I like to increase that to maybe something like 15, just to be safe in case there's something that I need from a recent version that I haven't saved manually. And a bonus tip is to stay out of After Effects. Time spent designing your style frames in Illustrator or Photoshop or wherever else is almost always quicker than trying to wing it and do a bit of design in After Effects. Trying to design and animate at the same time might seem like a quicker solution. And even though I'm tempted to do it a lot, I find that it really just slows down both processes and leaves you with a compromised result. My work always comes out better when I'm designing in my most comfortable program where design is my sole focus. And for me, that is not After Effects, which means that when we get into After Effects, everything goes smoother because the design is already planned out. I've made a short playlist of some related videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. Thank you.